Paul de Rosier's January 16, 1857 March 28, 1934 was a French social economist and industrial lobbyist. He was a follower of Pierre Guillaume Frédéric Play and believed in industrial syndicates that would be independent of both workers and owners and would be dedicated to the progress of their industries. He undertook studies of society and economic organization in the United States, Britain, and Germany, where he visited the rural areas, towns, cities, farms, mines, and factories, and spoke to workers, owners, politicians, and intellectuals to gain an understanding of the interplay of social and economic forces. His work gained him considerable respect. In 1903 Paul de Rousiers became Secretary General of the French Ship Owners Association, a position he held for most of the rest of his life. In this role he proved a highly effective lobbyist. He also provided valuable information and legal services to the members and helped in their negotiations with trade unions. He remained involved in social economics and taught of course at the Coal Libre de Sciences Politiques. Paul de Rosiers was a prolific author throughout his career, publishing many books and articles. Life Early Years Marie-Pierre Paul de Rosiers was born in Rochecouart, Hopien, on January 16, 1857. His father, a graduate of the Naval School, was an officer in the Navy and owned an agricultural estate in Russ, in the commune of Saint Maurice de Lyons, where Les Rousiers had lived for several generations. This is where Paul spent his childhood. After the death of his father in 1865, he entered the Jesuit College in Poitiers and obtained his baccalaureate in 1872. He then prepared for the examination for admission to the Naval School in Brest which he failed twice. De Rousiers turned to the study of the law at the Catholic Institute in Paris. His professor of political economy, Claudio Janet, was a disciple of Pierre-Guillaume Frédéric Play, head of the Société d'Economie Sociale and the Unions de la Pague Sociale. De Rousiers met Elie Play through Edmond Demelins, through whom he joined the group that met in Elie Play Salon every Monday. De Rousiers pursued his study of law and obtained a license and also worked in 1877 as chief of staff to the prefect of Aveyron, while continuing to study social science. His theoretical apprenticeship ended with the publication in 1881 of the programme de government et d'organisation sociale d'apres et l'observation compared to diverse pupils, with a preface by L.E. Play. This was a collective work by the small group led by Demelins. Social Economist Paul de Rosiers married Camille d'Artigas in May 1879. He joined the Sasset d'Economie Sociale and the Unions de la Pace Sociale, and from this time was committed to development of social science. From 1883 he became a regular contributor to Reform Sociale, a bi-monthly journal edited by Demelins. The term social geography was first used both by geographer Lise Reckless and by sociologists of the L.E. Play School, perhaps independently. The first proven occurrence of the term derives from a review of Reckless' new Valgography Universelle from 1884 written by Paul de Rousiers, a member of the Ellie Play School. Citation needed in 1885, three years after the death of Ellie Play, Henry de Turville and Demelin split from the movement and founded a new journal, Science Sociale. They brought with them a few adherents including de Rousiers and Robert Pino 1862-1926, future director of the Muse Social and Secretary General of the Commitna Forges. De Rousiers continued to work within this small group, which functioned as a true research team. The publisher firm indicted provided funding for Paul de Rousiers to visit the United States from March to June 1890. He wrote of what he found in La Vie Américaine 1892, an analysis of American society based on deliberate investigation including visits to factories and farms, observations of life in the cities and countryside, and interviews with representatives of different social groups including owners, workers, politicians, officials, and professionals. His goal was to understand the sociological forces behind the growing economic power of the U.S., which was starting to cause serious concern in Europe. De Rousiers interviewed George Pullman, who exerted huge control over the workforce who lived in his Pullman city. He wrote of Pullman's manufacturing complex, everything is done in order and with precision. One feels that some brain of superior intelligence, backed by a long technical experience, has thought out every possible detail. The book appeared in English in 1892, translated by the geographer Andrew John Herbert's son. In 1893 de Rousiers made two visits of four months to England and Scotland, then to Belfast, where in September 1893 he participated in a trade union congress. As in America, he made many observations, particularly in Birmingham, London, and the Scottish Lothians, 
visited factories and mines, and interviewed workers, industrialists, union leaders, and intellectuals such as Sidney Webb. Based his investigation he produced a major work on La Question of Writer in Angleterre 1895, translated as The Labour Question in Britain 1896. Elite Trade Unionism in Angleterre 1896 was a collective work that Paul de Rousiers organized at the request of the directors of the Muse Social. Robert Pino, the effective leader of the Muse and a close friend of de Rousiers, had placed him at the head of a team of four pupils of the Co Libre de Sciences Politiques who conducted inquiries in September and October 1895. The Muse Social supported a second study on the same subject in the U.S. from July to December 1896. De Rousiers led a team that included F. de Carbonell, Pierre Claudio Janet, and Louis Vigoroux. This resulted in several articles and two books, La Concentration de Forces of Riers dans l'Amérique du Nord by Vigoroux and Les Industries Monopolises Trusts Auxiliary Etats Unis by de Rousiers. After his second visit to the United States Paul de Rousiers' reputation was established. He was invited to contribute to reviews such as the Revue Politique et Parlementaire, Revue de Paris, Revue Bleuy, and Annals de Sciences Politiques, while continuing to contribute to La Science Sociale. In 1899 and 1900 he studied the German cartels and two journeys through the Ruhr, the plains of Saxony and Silesia. He then investigated the Comptoir Pallergy de Longwy, formed in 1877 by the main enterprises of Lorraine to coordinate purchase and allocation of pig iron. Based on this research he published Les Syndicates Industrials de Producteurs in France et L. Trang in 1901. His last important work about industrial relations was Hambury et L. Alamein Contemporary in 1902. Lobbyist Dward Gruner, mining engineer and vice president of the Commit Central de Hobulers, was an active member of the Sausset d'Economie Sociale and secretary treasurer of the Muse Social. He had already introduced Robert Pino to the metallurgy manufacturers who were looking for a leader for their trade association, and did the same for de Rousiers by putting him in contact with the shipbuilders, who wanted to found a professional association. De Rousiers was engaged in 1903 by Andrew Levin, former Minister of Commerce and then of the Colonies, and first president of the Commit Central de Armateurs de France CCAF Central Committee of French Shipowners. De Rousiers was Secretary General and Vice President Delegate of the Committee. He now had stable employment that allowed him to rebuild his family home in Russ and provide education to his five children. The CCAF was an owner's association typical of the time with the purpose of studying and defending the common interests of the shipowners. Within a year it represented 98% of the industry. De Rousiers quickly established a service to gather French and foreign information, which he described in March 1910. The information service of the Ship Owners Committee is not conceived in an academic spirit but in a spirit of practical use. We do not intend to constitute a compendium of jurisprudence or a compendium of statistics. We strive to point out to you all that seems likely to have an impact on your industry, anything that threatens your general interests, anything that is of a nature to serve them. The information service and a legal section both were frequently consulted by the ship owners. With his considerable intellectual authority, De Rousiers was an effective defender of the interests of the shipowners and contributed to discussions on legislative project. At times he was criticized for being too effective in his lobbying. During World War I 1914-18 there was an enforced truce between the shipowners and the labor unions, with the state as mediator. As soon as the armistice was declared the shipowners, led by the committee, reasserted their independence in negotiating wages. De Rousiers justified this position. Conditions vary according to the region, working conditions vary according to traffic and categories of vessels. Remuneration also depends on the possibilities of each company. How could it be conceived that, in the midst of a crisis, a professional trade union would be forced, by submitting to such an arbitration procedure, to impose new burdens on all its members which might exceed the limit of what some can bear? It would be a lack of clairvoyance. In 1923 the Sasset ETD Informations Economics formed by the Commit de Forges, published studies by de Rousiers defending good agreements. De Rousiers represented the shipowners in the Standing Joint Committee on Merchant Shipping, established in 1925, which had the purpose of examining issues that could cause conflicts between owner and workers. He also represented the owners on the Joint International Maritime Committee led by Albert Thomas, which sought to establish international status for seafarers. He participated in the international maritime conferences organized by the International Labor Office in Genoa 1920 and Geneva 1926, where the main interlocutor was Havelock Wilson of Britain, 
head of the International Federation of Seafarers Unions. In 1930, although not a shipowner, de Rousiers was elected vice president of the Commit Central de Armateurs. Other activities After the death of Turville in 1903 and Demelins in 1907 he assumed leadership of the Science Sociale Group. He also presided over the cold roaches that Demelins had founded which sought to apply the lessons of social science to educational reform. From 1908 he held a seat in economic geography at the Col Libre de Sciences Politiques. De Rousiers gave a course on large modern industries at this school. De Rousiers supervised a major inquiry into French manufacturing in 191516, co-directed by Henry Hauser and Henry Hittier, for the National Association of Economic Expansion. He was one of the main rapporteurs of the major inquiry into the merchant marine by an extra-parliamentary committee from 1922 to 1927. He published a five-volume work on Les Grandes Industries Modernes 1921928. He was appointed to the board of the Muse Social. Paul de Rousiers died on March 28, 1934. His historical monograph on his own family, Unfamil de Homeros Pendant Six Sickless, appeared after his death. His name was given to the general cargo ship Paul de Rousiers, built in 1942 by the Chantiers de Provence in Port Nabuc. Theories In La Vie Ambricaine, Paul de Rousiers distinguished the West, with its ranches, farms, and towns that were no more than farm markets, from the East with its manufactures commerce and city life. He saw them as two successive states of the same society, with the West helping to explain the East. De Rousiers, who inspired the revolutionary syndicalist George Sorrell with this work, wrote that the American aristocracy stressed ability and discouraged mediocrity, even among their own children. They were much more concerned with helping those with ability than with preventing the incompetent from dying of hunger. He wrote that every American feels himself capable of trying his luck on the battlefield of business so that the general spirit of the country is in complete harmony with that of the millionaires. In his 1898 Les Industries Monopolizes Trust's Auxiliary Etats Unis Paul de Rousiers noted that Americans at the time were too easily persuaded that monopolies must bring large benefits, although the whiskey and rope trusts had been short-lived and the sugar trust depended on protective tariffs and high payments to politicians. He thought that the German cartels and American trusts were similar and were designed to avoid lowering of prices due to overproduction. He wrote that when several producers realized their common interests they would inevitably form a highly disciplined association that would defend their interests as long as they followed its instructions. He contrasted the German cartel to the American trust, writing, The former is a league of allies in which each one preserves a certain liberty of action, but forbids himself the usage of certain weapons against the others. It represents a temperament more or less brought out in the economic struggle. On the other hand, the trust is the result of a struggle to the death. One is the German solution, the other the American solution of a problem posed in Germany as in America by the industrial system. These two solutions are as different from each other as the economic, social, and political conditions of the German Empire are different from the economic, political, and social conditions of the American Republic. They are not of the same nature. In La Question of Rire en Angleterre 1895 de Rousiers describes a process common to all economically advanced societies of constant advances in mechanization, changes in industrial job requirements and changes to markets, and examines how the different branches of industry are affected by the changes, and how the workers react. While he was in Britain there was a miners strike. In the conclusion of his work he outlines a concept of syndicalism with organizations independent of workers and owners that would favor the evolution of industry and solve the labor question. The way in which the strike was resolved through a conciliation board chaired by a third party seemed to him to foreshadow this new approach. In Les Syndicates Industrials de Producteurs and France E.T. Tranger 1901 de Rousiers commented favorably on the role of syndicates of manufacturers in regulating the markets, which he saw as beneficial both economically and socially. Paul de Rousiers was sympathetic to trade unions but thought they should focus on adapting to the constantly evolving industrial economy. He saw danger in their participation in political and ideological struggles, and in development of rigid attitudes and approaches. These themes were repeated and elaborated in L.A. Trade Unionism and Angleterra 1896. This book led George Sorrell to emphasize the importance of the unions in his Lavenier Socialist de Syndicates 1898. In Hamburg E.T.L. Alamey and Contemporary 1902 de Rousiers criticized the German labor movement, which he considered poorly organized and influenced too much by social democracy and the class struggle. He also criticized the owners who, by their paternalism, 
had hindered formation of autonomous trade unions within light of workers capable of directing them. Publications Publications by Arousiers include Paul de Rousier's 1878, Du Serment de César, Paris IMP saint Laurisus, P80. Paul de Rousier's 1884, Unions de la Pace Sociale, Fonds PARFLE Play, Angle made de Brutal. Paul de Rousier's 1884, Unions de la Pace Sociale, Fonds PARFLE Play. Unions de Anglois, On ECT saint Ange. El Tat Social Don Largi and de Confolens, Angle made de Brutal. P31. Paul de Rousier's 1892, La Vie Américaine, in French, Paris for Mendignet, P698. Paul de Rousier's 1892, American Life, translated by A.J. Herbert's son, London Castle, P437. Paul de Rousier's 1895, La Question of Rire en Angleterre, prefaced by Henry de Tourville, Paris for Mendignet, P532. Paul de Rousier's 1896, the Labour Question in Britain, London, New York, Macmillan and Co. Rousiers, Paulda, Carbonell, Xar, Festi, Octave, Fleury, Anner, Wilhelm, Joseph, 1897, L.E. Trade Unionism and Angleterre, P.A.R. Paul de Rousiers, Avet La Collaboration de Millimeter de Carbonell, Festi, Fleury, E.T. Wilhelm, Paris A. Colin, P356. Paul de Rousiers, 1898, L. Oklahoma, Preface by Harold Simon. Paris Plan, P32. Paul de Rousier's 1898, Les Industries Monopolizes Trusts Auxiliary Tach Unis, Paris A. Callan ETCIE, P339. Paul de Rousier's 1901, Les Syndicates Industrials de Producteurs in France ETL Tranger Trusts, Cartels, Comptoirs, Paris A. Callan, P290. Paul de Rousier's 1902, Hamburg ETL Alamein Contemporain, Paris A. Callan, P324. Edmund Demelins, Robert Pino, Paul de Rousier's 1904, Longtone Sociale, SES Proct ETSES Applications, La Science Sociale, Paris Bureaus de la Review. Paul de Rousier's 1907, La Lot Commerciale Actuelle. Les Exportations Allemands, Lurs Origins ET Lurs or Percussions Sociales, La Science Sociale, Paris Auxiliary Bureaus de la Science Sociale. Paul de Rousier's 1909, Les Solutions Violence, La Science Sociale, Paris Bureaus de la Science Sociale. Paul de Rousier's 1909, Les Grands Ports de France, Leur RL Economique, Paris et Colin, P260. Paul de Rousier's 1910, L'Inauguration du Monument d'Edouard Demelins, La Science Sociale, Paris Bureaus de la Science Sociale. Paul de Rousier's 1910, L'ERLET Les Limites de la Science Sociale. La Science Sociale, Paris. Paul de Rousier's August September 1910, I conference sur le projet de création Londres d'une maison d'étudiants, La Science Sociale, Paris Bureaus de la Science Sociale 88. Pierre Bodero, Maurice de Prigny, Paul de Rousier's, Fermin Ross, and Siegfried 1911, Les Questions Actuelles de Politique Trangre dans l'Amérique du Nord. Paris Sasset de Ancients LVESET LVES de L. Cole Libre de Sciences Politiques slash F. Falcon, P242. Paul de Rousier's 1912, La Formation de L. Like Don La Sasset Moderne, La Science Sociale, Paris Bureaus de La Science Sociale 76. Paul de Rousier's 1912, Les Syndicates Industrials de Producteurs in France ETL Trainer, Trust Scartles Comptoirs en Tons Internationales, Paris Colin. Camille Bloch, Louis Lafitte, Joseph Letticanux, Fernand Moret, Paul de Rousiers, Paul Vidal de La Blache 1913, Les Divisions Regionales de la France Lyons Fates El Col de Hautstudes Sociales, Paris et Falcon, P260. Paul de Rousiers 1914, El Light Don La Sasset Moderne, Son Arelli, Paris et Colin, P310. Mile Bourgeois, Pierre de N. Flandin, Paul de Rousiers 1916, La Guerre. Paris Association de Sciences Pa. France slash F. Falcon, P311. Paul de Rousier's 1924, La Marie and Marchanda, Paris Sassid Amicali de Officiers de l'Ecole d'Instruction de la Tenny Division Really Wee. Paul de Rousier's 1924-1928, Les Grandes Industries Modernes, Paris A. Colin. Paul de Rousier's 1926, Rapport sur les Recompenses, 
Orlan sauce at Central de soft and off regs. France slash H. Dessiers. Paul de Rousiers, Clemens Lammers 1927, Summary of Legislation on Cartels, London G. Routledge and Sons. Paul de Rousiers 1927, Les Cartels et Les Trusts et Le Revolution, Gen Sasset de Nations, p. 26. Paul de Rousiers 1928, L'Amelioration de Ports Maritimes Frenais, Paris Association Frenais pour le Development de Travaux Publics, p. 19. Paul de Rousiers July September 1930, La Situation Rail de la Marine Marchande Frenais, Review de Sciences Politiques, Paris F. Alcon, 53321338. Paul de Rousiers 1930, Les Factors de la Vie Nationale, L'Industrie, Communications et Mars de l'Académie de Marine, Paris Sausset d'Editions Gographiques, Maritimes et Coloniales, 8 25 Paul de Rousiers 1934, Unfamilde Hoboros Pendant Six Six Less, Paris Fermin Didant, P276.